Hello, and welcome to something I frankly wasn't expecting to be doing, but here we are nonetheless. Some of you probably already know that I actually have a playlist of Battlezone 1 or Battlezone 98, whatever you want to call it, um, the original Battlezone game. I think there was one earlier that was Battlezone, it was like a, it was one of those tank games with the things, I think that's what this deal is here, but I can't remember off the top of my head right now, but either way. This is the Battlezone 98 Redux, so this is the updated version, so it runs on newer systems with some additional things that I'm pretty sure the original game didn't have, for instance mod, com uh, mod support with priority listing and all of this jazz on here. Don't have any mods, game's not released. This is actually the beta that I am recording right now, which means could be some things wrong, could be some things changed. Uh, for instance, things that I want changed right now are these little slider things. They don't actually, you can't, you can't click the bar to make it go, it makes a noise. I don't know why it makes a noise, but you can't click the bar, you have to click the arrows for it to work. But either way, that's, that's a thing. Uh, there are graphic op graphics options. Um, HUD size, you can change, you can turn the HUD off if you want, all this jazz here. Uh, play options are just this, you know, you want to invert your mouse or whatever. You turn strategy help on, I have no idea what that is actually, does it have tooltips? I don't think it does, no. Uh, and then you can configure your input, which is a very buggy screen, so we're not going to go into too much detail on that. but. Again, this is the beta. This is well before it's released. In fact, uh, it is the 4th at the moment, and I cannot release videos until either on or after the 18th. I'll have to check, but... So a lot of this is going to be recorded before um, anything happens. Tomorrow is the multiplayer beta test, so hopefully I will be able to get some footage of that, assuming it goes as planned. Um, I think it's like 3 to 7 or something, but either way, that's it's irrelevant. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna do some recording. Uh, we can do combat exercises, I don't care. We can play as the Stars and Stripes USA or the Red Brigade Soviet Union, I believe. Um, but because I am American, we are going to start this off with the Stars and Stripes. Now, there's also this instant action button, which is a, uh, it's a custom mission thing, I believe is what that menu is, but I'm not sure. Um, this game's old. The Battle Battle Zone 98, Battle Zone 1 is old. Redux obviously not released yet, but it's been a long time since I've really played the game. Um, I don't think I ever finished the original playlist of this, so it's gonna take some getting used to for a lot of reasons. But it's you know, there's some things in the game that have to be left over because it's how the game works. But they do show their age a little bit. For those of you who don't know what Battle Zone is. It is a first-person RTS style game, so you'll um, you'll understand it as we get going. It introduces things very slowly in this game, so our first mission here is the fourth planet from the sun, Mars. That is not actually the first mission. Click that button. Is that the first mission? I didn't think that was the first mission. Archives. Yeah, that's not the first mission. Well, the first mission is this one right here, and we're going to apparently have to do these in a strange manner because I tested the first two missions, and apparently resetting achievements does not reset the missions, which it should. I'll have to point that out to him. Um, so the first mission here is very, very tutorial-esque. Um, when you have this mission screen, it tells you some information. For instance, this mission takes place on Luna, which is the Earth's moon, if you do not know. Um, it tells you, you know, satellite of Earth, third planet from the sun. It tells you the unit to the sun, distance from Earth, you know, surface gravity, all this this jazz diameter and stuff. That's all just stuff there for giggles. But it also tells you a little bit about what's going to go on in the mission here. So we are the NSDF. So NSDF command is concerned about heavy rocket activity in this theater. As of yet, there are no reports of direct contact with hostile forces. All moon personnel are currently on high alert. Our objectives are to get in a vehicle at Luna Outpost 3, which is where we start. Have the recycler build a scavenger. The recycler builds many things for you. It's basically 
kind of it's basically kind of like your vehicle slash utility factory you can build uh, ammo drops and stuff uh, and then we have to escort scavengers as they gather biometal scavengers plural but this mission objective was never plural because there's a, a sad fourth objective that kind of shows up but either way We've provided you with a variety of different vehicles. Get additional info on the vehicles by pointing your smart reticule at them and pressing I, I believe is what that is. So we will demonstrate that once we get in. It's five and a half minutes of no gameplay, but Sometimes it bugs here we me go. that Armstrong and Shepard get all the credit. But we all wanted to win the Cold War. And we were ready to commit our lives to getting the biometal. The military boys used all the material that had fallen to Earth and they still needed more. They went looking for a few cowboys to do the job, and in the end, they orchestrated the world's biggest cover-up. They snuck a whole army into space and not a soul knew a thing. <laughs> but now it's time. People should know why it was so important that we won the space race. People should know what happened to all those who went missing. The dead should get their honors, and they should have their place in history. Because history has a way of repeating itself. Satellite Commander, enabled. we've discovered a deposit of biometal along with some strange radar signatures. Build a scavenger and escort it to the biometal deposit. So here's the additional information. So it starts us off with, uh, I believe we have unlimited time at the start here. It doesn't trigger any the scripts until you get in a vehicle and build something, but. Uh, this is your smart reticule, this little wiggly bit thing here. Um, if you haven't played Battlezone before, it can be a little bit weird to get used to the controls because it's got some crazy mouse acceleration going off. As you can see, I will... I'll tell you, so it's, I'm not doing anything. We'll go ahead and move the mouse, and I've stopped moving. It went down a little bit, but you can see the, the floatiness of it. It takes a lot of getting used to. I mean, we are in space, things are floaty. Um, different things like that thing over there very difficult to turn it's very heavy but anyway here's our smart reticule which will show us additional information we start with four vehicles a medium tank a light tank scout and bomber the grizzly is the medium tank well-rounded tells you what builds it uh, it's got four weapons on it most of which I never use because they're just there for giggles mostly but we also have a bobcat which is a lightweight tank that is cheap has one rocket, one cannon, and one specialized hardpoint. Very, very uh, cheap to build compared to Grizzlies, but they are obviously much weaker. We also have the bomber, which is my favorite thing for this mission, even though it's remarkably slow. It's a heavy bomber, heavy bomber, a fast-moving but unmaneuverable vehicle. The Thunderbolt features two rockets and one cannon. It does a boatload of damage. And then we have our light attack vehicle. Um, it has basically no armor and no health it's got two cannons and one rocket um it's decent damage it's a scout vehicle though um but we are currently a person if we sometimes there's a thing with the camera that's in the top right where you can actually sh you can see your own dude but i don't know where the heck that camera has positioned itself and i don't know how to change it so what i normally do is get into this but we are a person. Um, this is what you play as when you're outside of a vehicle. You have a plasma rifle that does basically nothing, and you also have a sniper rifle, and I've now forgotten how to change my weapons. Um, God dang it. I just looked this up, and I've already forgotten how to change weapons. Straight right, high, forward, joystick, no, none of those are the correct ones. Literally just played this and had that, but... Either way, here's our bomber view. You can see this is me trying to turn it with the mouse. It takes a lot of movement to actually get this thing to rotate, but... This is our recycler. This is how we build stuff. In the top left, you can quick select things, but you can also just look at things to select them, but... Recycler here. We're gonna be doing quick select mostly. You can tell it to pack up. That's not what we want to do. We want to put a scavenger started. in. This menu tells you if the vehicle or object or whatever complete. needs a pilot. It will say P for pilot, so it'll take one of our available pilots if we have any. And then the number next to that is how much scrap it takes to build. So a scavenger takes four scrap. Scavengers are 
basically your harvesters. Um, if you've played basically any other RTS, these are your resource gatherers. They will wander off on their own. They're fairly intelligent. They will um, pathfind relatively well, given the age of the game. For instance, if I just park right here in front of him, you can see he get, he moves to the side to get Grizzly out of my way. One, we've got a situation. Unidentified vehicles are approaching your position from the south. Deal with this guy real quick here if we can. I was fairly confident that was going to hit and I was going to be real proud of my shot. How did that not kill you? If both of it's probably because he pushed me. If both of those rockets hit, it kill it kills them instantly, but scavengers will wander off to the nearest available pile of what this game calls biometal. In this case, this is our pile of biometal. Um, and that is the resource that turns into scrap. So, obviously you want as much biometal as possible. Protect the scavenger and retreat to outpost three. This game does also have a difficulty selector. I don't know if I mentioned that, but it is in the game options. It allows you to select the difficulty of your choice. Scavengers are very squishy, by the way. Over, over, I'm gonna see you here. Utility unit will roam battlefield autonomous, autonomously and gather biometal. If there is no biometal available, out there that's being threatened by Soviet wingmen. if there's no biometal available, um, it will sit in the middle of your base basically. But if there is biometal available, it will automatically go to it. And any at any point, um, additional biometal appears, it will automatically maneuver to gather it. They're not smart enough to not go. We should have defenses over there, so it should be fine. They're not smart enough to not go towards places that have known Warning. hostiles. Damage critical. Unit lost. Ooh, damage critical. Oh, my damage is critical. I think I might have shot myself with a rocket or something there, because this thing is fairly beefy, but... You know, the other thing that goes off... is demonstrated by this guy killing me. The enemy also have people when you blow up their ships. Um, if you don't kill the person, the pilot inside as well, they will run around and chase you. This thing's basically dead. So, good work, Grizzly One. We've confirmed That's the whole that the first mission. I forgot what I was Soviet saying earlier. Origin. They've maneuvered around outpost three and are headed towards Eagle's Nest One. Await further orders from NSDF command. There you go. So mission complete. We have confirmed that the invading units our Soviet, as the CIA, CIA believed the Soviets have a counterpart to her NSDF called the Cosmic Colonist Army. It's a very strange name, but whatever. Their goals are in direct conflict with ours. The CCA forces avoided Outpost 3 and moved on to attack our main base at Eagle's Nest 1. Their attack caught our base defenses off guard and casualties are high. NSDF commander now recalling all combat units to help. So that's the first mission. Let's go ahead and do the second mission because it's also relatively short and relatively easy. It is the second mission. This is the mission for Eagle's Nest 1 that is currently under attack. So we're still on the moon. All your moon related info. Our objectives are to fight off attacking units, use the recycler to build defensive turrets, which are very useful, and then stand by for additional orders. So you will have the recycler Montana at your disposal. The Montana is capable of gathering and maintaining resources, and it is equipped to build M173 Badger turrets. So, the Badger turret, you can see it gives some info there. 100 me 150 meter fire radius. Um, it is equipped with a basic cannon, so it doesn't do a whole lot of damage, but you can mass produce them relatively easily. It has stabilized terrain adapting bases. Apparently. The stab secures the low weight turret into the terrain and allows it to fire accurately indeed. Can't move when it shoots though. It can move when it's not shooting, but you know. Not both together. I think there's supposed to be some dialogue on this loading this is screen. General Collins, Commander. You're just in time. The first Soviet attack has destroyed all of Eagle's Nest 1's defenses. Check your radar. We've got additional Soviet forces coming in from the southeast. They're targeting the command tower and our solar array. Protect these structures at all costs. No scrap storage. No scrap storage. So we're actually playing as the medium tank now, I believe is what our currently equipped thing is. 
me. Where are you going, buddy? Oh, I think these dudes are scripted to just leave after they shoot at you for a bit. There's some turrets over there which I don't really want to deal with. She's a training vehicle, but she does have turret building capabilities. Use her to build some turrets and set up a defensive. So this is the Montana. In order for these things to do anything, they have to have power, which means they must be sat on a geyser. So you can go ahead and tell our recycler to pull her there, and we'll go ahead and start building some turrets. Turrets are six each, they take one pilot per. We should be alright though, because we have a fair amount of scrap relatively close to our outpost here. Recycler here. See our recyclers coming in. I don't remember how much they bring in per recycle. Per load. It looks like three, yeah. Construction started. Building. Also in this base we have this thing, which is a repair uh, bay or whatever, and then we have this. Makes a different noise. Makes that little beep. That is our ammo uh, factory or whatever. So we can come over here if we need to get repairs or ammo. Um, over there is our solar array objective, and here is our command tower objective. Started. We push this. You can see we need to defend. Our recyclers will Building keep doing their things. But anyway, our turrets can only shoot when stationary. Badger here. And we kind of want these deployed in an area that will allow them to defend our objectives relatively capably. You're the boss. So we're going to spread these out a bit. Turret I don't remember deployed. all of where the enemies You're come the from, boss. so... Recycler here. You have plenty of time to deploy, figure out how to deploy your recycler, how Turret to deployed. use your recycler, and get a few turrets set up. Turret so. deployed. This is what they look like, by the way. May as well follow them around a little bit. They're not very fast, and they're, you know, medium armor capabilities. Building you can complete. actually highlight over them. Can't fire when undeployed, has two cannons. Indeed it does. But this is what they look like. They're stationary. You can't do anything to them. They're basically a structure, so they won't move. And they will pivot and rotate as necessary to murder things. Badger here. You're the boss. Recycler here. Now because this is first person, there's no big tactical view where you're, you know, overhead and easily capable of uh, maneuvering things, uh, you will have to use your mini-map a lot. When I select a, a unit type category, you'll see it highlights all of those unit types as well as where they are, what their number is. And then if we select one, it turns him yellow so we can actually see where they are at any given point. Otherwise, you end up doing a lot of... Freaking defensive unit lost. Really? A scavenger was under attack there, too. Yeah, it is. Rip scavenger. Cycler's fine. We don't have to defend this for very long, so it's not too much of an issue, but we should probably have another recycler built, unfortunately. Now that did cost us a pilot, because I'm pretty sure that pilot died when that scavenger exploded, so... That pilot is lost. However, the scavenger did explode into uh, biometal that we can scavenge, so... Recycler here. Construction we'll build started. another scavenger, because we lost that one. Um, I'm playing on normal, so... I am going to lose a lot of units, because the enemy is actually doing full damage to my units, which means they can kill them relatively quickly. So we do have to keep an eye out for that. It also means they can destroy the objectives relatively quickly. So you can see here that thing has 2,000 hull, which isn't really that much. We do have to keep an eye out for that. But for the most part, this mission is basically just kind of... Construction started. That's not at Building. all what I meant to do. What is that? That's D for cancel. I'm not sure. Construction I was trying started. to remember what the cancel button was, but it's a bit late for that. Building complete. Construction started. I believe the recycler will uh, repair itself over time as well, if I'm not mistaken. Building as long complete. as it's not under attack, it can sort itself out. So. Deploy it. 
turret one, you can hang out over there. Um, two, three, four, five. Because we're under a... Oh, that's what's going on. I killed that dude over there, so they're... You guys... They're, they're flying all the way over to where I killed that unit over there, but there's a bunch of enemy turrets in that region, so... Oh, wait, mate. Pop that. Excuse me. So unfortunately, these guys are just going to go over here and get the crap shot out of them unless I tell them to stop or blow up these turrets, so... I should probably blow up the turret because I outrange them. I believe everything in the game outranges turrets. So that is a thing to be aware of. I would like... There we go. It's very difficult to aim because it's so floaty. Get used to it eventually, but... They have found me. Apparently I'm just going to take those shots to the face. Ammo depleted. Good enough. Let's head back to the base here. We can build some more turrets, so we probably should. Let's go get some ammo and stuff. We should get our next objective fairly soon here. Commander, reinforcements are returning from Outpost 2. Rendezvous at the Northern Solar Array. Well, not quite our next objective, but... Fairly close to our next objective. So let's plop you... You're the boss! There. Badger here! We seem to be getting a lot yes, of sir. hassle from that direction, so... You're the boss. Put that turret over there as well. Let's... Yes, sir. Unfortunately, we're going to have to stay here and f we're going to lose both of those scavengers. Because the they're getting that crap hassled out of them, which is not good. Lost both of our scavengers. There's no bueno. No, I died. Is it right click? Yeah, it's right click to change weapons. Turret deployed. Now I believe you can snipe pilots out of vehicles. We have limited ammo to do it with, and I don't remember exactly where you have to shoot to do it, but. My recycler is under attack. Oh, I forgot about you. Recycler here. Construction started. Building. We're gonna lose that recycler. Which is probably gonna fail the mission. This is. They bring in a transport over here full of a bunch of dudes to just blow up your scavenger, and I forgot about it. Building lost. Building lost. Satellite recon indicates that an overwhelming Soviet strike force has just landed to the north. And to oh, you know what? I should have. Uh, Got, we got units. Repeat, we are pulling out of Eagle's Nest 1. This is basically the end of the mission, though. Although Commander, I have lost my vehicle, so... All have reached transports 1 and 2. Disregard all previous orders and escort these two transports to the north launch pad. Yes, sir. So we're gonna tell this tank to pick me up. Basically just means he'll come over here and try to run me over. You can abuse this mission objective a little bit by telling these two transports to follow you. This is what happens, by the way. He just jumps out of his vehicle and wanders off. Standing by. Whoa, so you follow the me close. Here. And the two transports are on the move now. So that base is lost. Commander, take up a position in front of the transports and look out for Soviet blockades. It was never intended to survive this mission anyway, but for this objective, we just have to get these transports over here. In the meantime, the Soviets will send a bunch of turrets to us. If we let them deploy, we're going to have a bit of an issue, so... I recommend attacking them as quickly as possible. Thankfully, they're real slow on deploying, so you've got plenty of time to actually get them killed in this mission. Later missions, they will deploy, like, right in front of you and wreck the crap out of you, so... I think I hit that one. 
These are the pilots from those turrets that we shot at. We're gonna lose all those buildings over there, it doesn't matter. Those are no longer our objective. Objective is to leave. Power lost. We're done with the mission, by the way. We just have to get over here. Nice job, Grizzly One. Now, get to the launch pad. We did it. Well done, Commander. Well done. Attention all NSDF forces. We have successfully evacuated all ground personnel. However, we have lost Eagle's Nest One to the Soviets. We underestimated the Soviets' strength. We underestimated their commitment to controlling the biometal. Now their intentions are clear. And if it's a war they want, then it's a war they shall get. We're relocating to Mars, where we will reassert our standing as the world's greatest superpower. Woo! USA! USA! Etc. Etc. We have to watch this guy drive around randomly and then he's going to come over to the camera and then shoot past the camera even though we know there's nothing over there. There he goes. Good script. Your bravery and skill allowed the liberty, justice, and freedom to, to successfully evacuate our surviving moon forces. Based on our astronomical research reports, uh, which, what? It's hard to read this text sometimes, which modeled the likely path of the meteor shower. Our scientists believe that we might find additional deposits on the red planet. There you go. That will be the next mission, though, which is this mission. The mission it went on the first time, but it's going to be the end of this video, though. It's about 26 minutes long, so it's a thing. I guess I'll just, you know, finish this game before it actually releases and before I can make any videos. I don't remember how many missions there are, but regardless, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.